Retire with Manjula, a show about giving, featuring non-profit organizations, social activists, social entrepreneurs, and philanthropists who are giving back and making a difference. Chai with Manjula is a show that is a must. -see. Welcome to Chai with Manjula. Each one of us has lost a close friend or someone dear to blood cancer. And too often we lost them because matching bone marrow could not be found. In the U.S., there are 10 million registered bone marrow donors. 20% are minorities. And out of that 20%, only 1% are South Asians. So for South Asians, the chances of finding a bone marrow match are as low as 1 in 20,000. The severe shortage of donors often stems from fear or ignorance of the process or simply from the fact that we have not yet considered doing it. A group of Stanford students decided to change that, and they have launched a program called 100,000 Cheeks to develop a large-scale bone marrow registration drive with a special focus on the South Asian community. My first guest today is Vineet Singhal, the executive director of this wonderful organization. Vineet, welcome to Chai with Manjula. Thank you so much. Well, tell me, how did 100,000 Cheeks start and what is your involvement with the organization? So 100,000 Cheeks uh, organization started about two years ago. Uh, it was the result of the book called The Dragonfly Effect, which was written by Stanford Business School professor. Oh, I've heard of it. Je uh, Jennifer Acker, yeah, and right, her right. husband, Andy Smith, uh -huh. uh, who wrote the book. And one of the main principles of the book was how do you use social media like Facebook and Twitter for creating infectious social change. Okay. And how this relates to what we're talking about with bone marrow is because of the story of this one individual, Samir Bhatia. Who I remember Samir. Yeah. I worked with him a little bit at AIF when I was helping them. Yeah, and he, as you know, was uh, unfortunately diagnosed with leukemia back right, in, uh, right. I think, 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and his friends specifically started a movement all across the U.S. and parts of India mm -hmm. to register 20,000 new donors on the bone marrow registry because the physicians, his physicians had told him that he needed a bone marrow transplant to survive uh -huh. and his chances of finding one were 1 in 20,000. Right. So they registered about, about 24,000 people wow. and found him a perfect match. Great. great. Um, and unfortunately, although Samir passed away due to complications, mm -hmm. his story and the 24,000 people that were registered mm -hmm. inspired 266 people off those 24,000 within the first year to donate bone marrow. Wow. and uh, found life-saving matches for so those So 266 people. people received bone marrow from that registry? From the registry that uh, that, that Samir inspired. Yeah, right. And uh, so that was the, the inspiration for this, for this organization, was that okay. if you can find 266 matches mm -hmm. from 24,000 people right. within one year, right, right. what can we do with 100,000 new donors? Okay. Um, and so that is essentially the reason for this organization, is the uh -huh. fact that there's, all, there's this huge deficiency for mm -hmm. South Asian and other types of minority donors mm -hmm. in the bone marrow pool. And uh, if you can get 100,000 of these people to join mm -hmm. the registry by swabbing their cheek and entering their DNA into this registry, right, we can make right. a huge difference. So your goal was to sign up 100,000 people. How, how did it go? Uh, so we ended up in the span of 18 months registering 115,000. And we, worked, we did this through working with individual families and individual campaigns. I see. Uh, so for those who may not be aware, there's a lot of effort that happens on the, on the end of individual people who mm -hmm. need bone marrow matches. And because the chances of finding a match are so low from each individual person, right. the only way to overcome that is to register as many people as possible. Right, right. Um, and so that's that why maximize, maximizes, maximizes the chances, the chances of finding, because uh, right. it, could be, it could be anyone, right? Right, right. And so the individual campaigns that we worked with ended up registering anywhere from five to 40,000 people each I for see. each individual story. And it's, it's so powerful that people associate with individual stories more so than they associate mm -hmm. with big numbers or big statistics. I people see. associate with individual people. Yeah, I remember receiving emails about uh, Samir, Vineet, and mm -hmm, Amit, mm -hmm. and so many others. Yeah. So uh, obviously you met your goal mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm, wanted, so, mm -hmm. but you are still continuing the yes. effort, right? Yes. So what was the uh, reason for your success, that you were able to do what you were set yeah. out to do? 
Yeah, there were a few reasons why we think the the work that we did was uh, was accomplished, or the goal that we had started was accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it can be boiled down to a few things. The first is that we cultivated optimism, that we took this subject, which is extremely depressing, you know, right. cancer, you have all these different negative emotions associated with, with it, but we cultivated optimism in the sense that we inspired hope with people. We said that although this is a really bad situation, mm -hmm. you can do something about it. Right. You can give your uh, DNA and you can, you can actually help someone. Mm -hmm. The second principle was that we harnessed the power of social networks. We harnessed Facebook, we harnessed StumbleUpon, we harnessed AOL, and all these different social networks that were able to get so many more people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the one of the campaigns that we did in partnership with Do Something Org with Aziz Ansari uh -huh. uh, reached 7.5 million people in, in wow. terms of impressions, and so we were able to target a lot of people through these social networks. Uh, specifically, people uh, or networks that we knew would reach the kind of kinds of population that we were trying to reach. Okay, so inspiring people and using social networks, mm -hmm. cultivating hope. You cultivating know, cultivating uh, hope. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what did it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there, including me also, who are afraid mm -hmm. of giving mm -hmm. bone marrow mm -hmm. because we have this fear in our minds, you know, of needles poking in our spine sure. and uh, sucking some marrow out and yeah. giving it to the, the patient. And a lot of times we hear that uh, the donor suffers more than the uh, patient. Sure. So I would like you to walk us through the process of sure. uh, uh, registering and donating. Uh, How does so it work? Essentially, in order to register as a bone marrow donor, uh, you just need to go online mm -hmm. on marrow.org. Uh, marrow.org. Marrow.org is okay. the website. Okay. And you can request a kit for uh -huh. free, mm -hmm. and it will come to your house, and all you need to do is swab your cheek uh, with a cotton swab, okay. and you send it back. And so, it's as simple as that. So that establishes your DNA. As and your that's DNA. Enough, mm -hmm. That's enough to uh, uh, show whether you are a match or not for someone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Okay, so what's the next step? Say your, d your uh, the, the sample matches someone. Mm -hmm. Where do you go from there? What do you do? So you will get a call from the registry saying okay. that you are a match for someone in uh -huh. need. Um, and uh, this is one of the biggest things that we had to overcome was there's so many misconceptions around uh, about, around what actually it means to donate. Right. Uh, and most people consider when they, when they hear the word bone marrow or the phrase bone marrow, they, they consider it to be very painful. Right. They consider it to be very scary. Yeah. Uh, there's needles poking in in all different parts of your body, collecting this very essential marrow exactly. that you that you that you have. Um, so a couple things. The first is that your bone marrow replaces itself every three months. Okay. Um, so every single piece of bone marrow that you have in your body, um, mm -hmm. it, it's mostly replaced. And every how much three do you months. donate? You donate only five to ten percent of it every time you donate. Okay, five to ten percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second reason, the second misconception that people have is about the pain factor. Right. Seventy-five percent of the time that you're donating bone marrow, you're actually sitting in a chair watching TV, and really? there's exactly there's there's needles going, there's one needle going from one arm through a machine, and that returning the blood back to the other arm, and collecting these bone marrow cells that okay, are so essential. So you are drawing blood. You're drawing blood, but then you're returning every single component of the blood except the bone marrow cells that get replaced every three months. You're returning? You're returning it back to your body. Wow. Yes. And how, how long does it take? It takes about four hours. Four hours. Mm -hmm. And you're watching, you can watch TV, you can do anything, read a book. Uh, and that happens 75% of the time. Wow. The I other, didn't know that. Yeah, so that was one of the things that we had to overcome was that we had to actually educate people about uh -huh. the process. Um, and the second 25% is the actual inpatient procedure, but that happens under anesthesia. And that happens when you're donating, mostly when, when you're donating to someone who is a, a child. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who, who can donate? Who is eligible who, and who is not? Are there any restrictions? There's there's Health-wise or otherwise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, there's two major restrictions. Uh, the first is age. So you need to be between the ages of 18 and 60 mm -hmm. in order to donate. Uh, the second restriction is uh, health uh, concerns. There's a whole host of health okay. um, uh, disorders that if you have, then you're not eligible. And those are all I available see. on marrow.org. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Vinay, tell me, what is 100K Cheeks doing now? So now the effort is focused mostly on 
creating and helping uh, these registries that have been set up around the world. So mm -hmm. there's a registry in the U.S., there's a registry in Singapore and in the U.K. and other parts of the world. I see. Um, and how do you help them? Because they have the resources to reach all these patients. How do you help them utilize social networks more effectively? How do you help them utilize mm -hmm. uh, and, and cultivate optimism more effectively? I see. And so we're helping them, for example, the Be the Match Registry, which is the same thing as National Mallard Donor Program. Mm -hmm. We're helping them cultivate and utilize Facebook um, and uh, revamping their online presence to target and, and highlight patient stories and working with Facebook and their leadership in order to uh, help them do that. And so a lot of work is happening with social networks. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you. here and uh, dispelling so many myths and fears <laughs> about donating bone marrow. And uh, my next guest is Lata, Dr. Lata from India. And after I talk to her a little bit, uh, I'm going to invite you back and introduce you to her. Great. So uh, see you in a few minutes. That sounds great. <laughs> As we just learned, the shortage of bone marrow donors within the South Asian community is simply alarming. And the biggest donor base for this community is in India, a country with 1.2 billion people. So we invited a special guest, Dr. Lata Jagannathan from Bangalore, who was doing work in this area in India. Lata is the founder, medical director, and managing trustee of Bangalore Medical Services Trust, also known as BMST. She established the Rotary Bangalore TTK Blood Bank and has been responsible for its operations. Lata has headed the corporate social responsibility cell of the Confederation of Indian Industries, Karnataka, for many years and has also been actively involved in numerous other initiatives. So we'll get some insight from Lata into the work being done in India regarding the bone marrow registry and today I would also like to connect 100,000 cheeks with BMST in India for a mutually beneficial relationship, which can eventually result in tremendously improving the odds of South Asians finding a bone marrow match. Lata, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank Sounds you. like uh, amazing work that you are doing over there. So tell us about BMST, yes. what it is about, and what is your involvement. In yeah. So it's it's a not-for-profit trust of the Rotary and TTK and company. Mm -hmm. um, we started out as a blood center, and uh, from uh, a collection of about 5,000 units in 1984, mm -hmm. we've grown to, say, last year, for example, we collected about 34,000 units, which is, which wow. is a remarkable mm -hmm. uh, thing. It's a totally voluntary donor system, and most of our donors are from all the IT companies in Bangalore. We're so uh, fortunate to be located in Bangalore, so mm -hmm. I have all these young, uh, you know, healthy donors from their well-informed mm -hmm. donors. So we have a great donor base, and I'm really pr proud of it. Okay. And... Uh, from a blood center, we've grown over the years into offering other kinds of laboratory services, which one of the things is the tissue typing, which is required for uh, transplants, both solid organ kidney transplants oh. and so on, as, and bone marrow I transplants, mm -hmm. a bone uh, bank. Um, and we also do a lot of other work with, uh, with the community in terms of HIV, AIDS, awareness, oh. and alcohol, and violence and, and gender and so on and so uh -huh. So these are all different things that we do now. There's a lot you are covering in terms yes. of transplants, blood uh, transfusion yeah. and mm. uh, HIV, AIDS and whatnot. Yeah. And you also mentioned bone marrow. Yes. So I would like to know more about the status of bone marrow registry in India. How are people going about it now in case someone needs a transplant? What is available to them in terms of uh, donors? Um, there's not much of a, a bone marrow registry uh, effort in India. There wasn't much till recently when uh, this new registry called Datri was set up. What is and it called? Datri. And how do you spell it? D-A-T-R-I. Okay. And it means, um, I think it also means giving. Giving. Or, or, or yeah. a 
guest, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, they have been remarkable. They've uh, got more than 10,000, I think nearly 20,000 donors who have registered with them. Okay. So there are other small efforts like this. Is there a in national a, bone marrow registry in India? No, there isn't, not as really? yet. In most other countries, there is a registry. Mm -hmm. And there are several registries in, in many countries and yeah. which have been established many years ago and they have millions and millions of donors who have mm -hmm. registered with them. So is BMST doing something about it? We did initiate a, a registry um, some years ago and uh, this was the armed forces and all the uh, Rotary and other voluntary blood donor organizations nice. and blood mm -hmm. centers. And uh, we said we would work together at a national level because these were mm -hmm. all over India. And we would re uh, establish this registry. Um, and uh, we have given um, this proposal for funding to the government. I see. Still awaiting some positive response from them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we did a, a pilot in Bangalore with I our see. own uh, blood donors because mm -hmm. I believed um, that a blood donor who's already, you know, donated blood, at least they know what it is to give. Right. And uh, so we did that, a pilot, and we called it um, Life Day India because there was that movie at that point called Chuck Day so, India, right, which was right. very popular. Uh -huh. So we said, okay, let's call it so Life Day India. Meaning uh, give life. Give life. Okay. So um, within about eight to nine months, we uh, about 6,000 people, 6,000 of our voluntary donors mm -hmm. had joined, which, is, which I do believe is remarkable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only problem is we didn't have the money to do the tissue typing, the HLA typing. Okay. So we need the funding for that. Okay, so <laughs> and so that's where it is. Okay. So funding is what you need yes, uh, yes. terribly. And mm. I hope uh, the NRIs can help you I'm, with that. I'm hoping that because yes. some uh, of the organizations here or yes. philanthropists, you know, yes. they could help you with that. Yeah. And so if there is some kind of a, an initiative from here mm -hmm. and then we can match something in India with that, okay. then this should take off. And one other question I have for you is, since you are a doctor, I read that you also have an uh, umbilical cord blood bank. <laughs> Tell me, what is it about and why is it so important for people to save the cord? Because it's a new concept. Yeah. In our ge uh, generation, we no, didn't do that, there, but yeah. I see all the young yeah. moms now doing it. Yeah. So if you can explain it to our audience and to me also, yeah. uh, how it works and why is it so important? So the, for the bone marrow transplant, you can get the stem cells, as it's called, which, which is found in the uh, bone marrow okay. um, from two different sources, one from the marrow, and uh, the other from the umbilical cord. Oh. The umbilical cord blood is very rich in these stem cells. I see. And uh, the advantage is that the match, the tissue match need not be so uh, so good. Okay. So even if there's a little bit of mismatch, it's okay. okay. So which is why it is uh, mm -hmm. that much better. Okay. Um, in India, there is one um, public cord blood bank, which mm -hmm. is a Reliance blood bank in uh, in. Uh, Bombay and there are others which have started but the vast majority are the um, private cord blood banks mm -hmm. and uh, well I've been trying to convince a lot of people I'm happy to say I convinced my own daughter-in-law and son <laughs> when they had the baby they donated the cord blood to a public cord blood well, bank that's a great idea so, and so great that way. people out there can can use it Right, right, right. So that's so another source of... Uh, of stem cells. Uh, yeah, stem for, cells. For you heard Vineet earlier from yes. uh, uh, 100,000 cheeks. He's doing and a I've, great job. Yeah, and I would yeah. like to call him back and yeah. see how you two can work together in the great work that you are I doing. I would like to do that. And sure. I, I would like to thank you for the chai and for having <laughs> me here. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Well, Lata, now I would like you to meet Vineet Singhal of 100 kg. Nice to meet you. Wonderful meeting you. You have done such a lot. Yes, yeah, really. you were really. waiting outside when I was it's talking amazing. to him. And yeah. Vineet mentioned that they are helping other organizations yes. around the world. You know, they yeah. have a huge success story here. Mm. And I uh, would like to know how Vineet could help BMST establish a large donor base in India. You could teach us. <laughs> you can teach us how you got these 
enormous numbers and like you said through the social media um, and uh, today the youth that's the target they uh, are really into the social media so yeah. please teach us how to do it and there's no reason for us to you know reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. you teach us mm -hmm. how to do it Absolutely. and yeah, that's that, what i would most like yeah, from you that'd be great so Absolutely. what do you say what can you do for them uh, so i mean you're absolutely right that there is a huge huge social media mm -hmm. boom that's happening mm -hmm. in, in right. india right. um you know it's slowly becoming one of the biggest uh in terms of pure numbers, users mm -hmm. of social media online, more and more people in India, especially young people, are getting online yes. every day. Mm. Um, and as you think about it, this is something that's actually pretty critical to understand, is that young people uh, and younger males especially are better yes. donors yes. Um, right. in, when you're talking about bone marrow. Yeah. Right. And so targeting that population with things like social games, you think about mm -hmm. Zynga, you think about Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. and and the stumble upon and all these different social media outlets, Orkut is popular as well. Uh, we can definitely do a lot in terms of uh, working together to share best practices. Do you have a special yes. program that you follow or is it uh, custom tailored? So we, what we do is we follow a set of best practices that, ha that work in social right, media. Right, we right. Uh, li reach out to high network, high uh, yield partners uh -huh. that can help spread the message, spread individual stories. Mm -hmm. And individual stories, as I talked about, is what is most persuasive uh -huh. when you're talking about grabbing people's attention. That's one of the mm -hmm. principles okay. of the dragonfly effect is you need to grab people's attention, make them actually look at what you're trying mm -hmm. to tell them, mm -hmm. tell an effective story, and then inspire them to take action. Okay. You can do all of those with social media. And, and would you, uh, sorry, would you also, because the other thing we also need is the funding. Mm -hmm. And through the same social media thing, would you be also able to help with that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a big need. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about this earlier that there are restrictions on people. People can only do so much. Mm -hmm. um, think about 18 to 60. In yes. some cases, it's 18 to 45. Yeah. Um, that there are that people who are above that age or uh, in some cases even below that age mm -hmm. limit right. they can they can't register but they can help do other things like run drives or give money and do a lot of things so there's okay. a lot of possibilities for people to engage mm -hmm. and a lot of that can be made possible with social media okay, okay. Yeah. and at, at the, the same time how can Lata and her organization BMSD be of help to you well so one of the things that we have uh, that I didn't talk about that we have always wanted to do was to jumpstart a registry, a national registry in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things that we would love to explore is how can we help? How can we be useful yeah. in, in yes. doing that? Because it's very donor, much needed. It is. The biggest it donor is base really for South Asians. South Asians yes. in the world, yeah. Okay, it's, it's so really BMST important. could help you with that and yes. uh, then you can tap that donor base in India. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. With, so, with their help. Absolutely. So you would find uh, more more matches from from uh, the people in India absolutely who, who right because hopefully join our register absolutely. with our efforts absolutely. because it's a common pool worldwide yes, yes. so it is. Mm -hmm. yeah people have access to it from anywhere South yes. Asians yes. from yes. anywhere can access this so that will be great if you yes. two work together and if yeah. this connection establishes absolutely. a yeah, absolutely. long term relationship mm -hmm. that will be great and in fact I would suggest to all organizations doing similar work mm -hmm. to jo join hands with you guys yes. Yes. to build a large donor base one other thing I would like you to, uh, 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 as a message give, is that a person registering today, he's young, he's enthusiastic, but he needs to be on the registry mm -hmm. and available, mm -hmm. even if he changes jobs, countries, mm -hmm. his cell phone, email, mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. he should be available mm -hmm. to be contacted. So that's a message that Absolutely. should come through Absolutely. really strongly you stay because in touch. Absolutely. yes to Absolutely. stay in touch to be Absolutely. so that we should be able to contact them maybe even 25 years mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. when we find a patient that's very important mm -hmm. yes yeah. uh, life match. typing mm -hmm. match yes. so speaking of messages do you have a message for our viewers yes um, the show is about giving and that's what i want mm -hmm. you need to give we need the money mm -hmm. so we want that, but more importantly, your time, your effort to get more people into this and to make everybody aware of this, that this is an important cause. And give a promise when you join the registry that you will stay mm -hmm. and be available to donate when a patient most needs. Because when a patient finds out that there could be a possible match mm -hmm. and then the, do the donor, the last minute says no, oh, 
It's yeah. such a disappointment. So devastating. It's, it's absolutely devastating. Right, so right. make a promise to yourself. If you join the registry, you will be available. Great. Till you, till yeah. you donate. Okay. And Vineet, what about you? Any message for our viewers? So um, I would like to encourage everyone out there to go and go to Mara.org or the registry that your country has and register as a bone marrow donor. Uh, myself, I registered at uh, 100,000 Sheik's first drive, and uh, I didn't know anything about bone marrow at the time, but I got educated. I learned about the various different ways you could donate and how easy and, and relatively painless it is. And eight months later, I actually got a call that I had matched with someone uh, in need, and uh, that was the best call ever. I mean, it was so fulfilling to actually have received a call that said that something that you did could potentially save someone's life. Um, and so that could be you. You could be the one to save someone's life or multiple lives for that matter and definitely encourage your family and friends to join as well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. On that yeah. note, thank you, Vineet, very much. Thank you so and much. Thank you, Latha. Thank you so much. And thanks for the for wonderful work that you are doing. And I look forward to seeing your uh, relationship develop and yes. the progress that you make. And I'll be happy to help you in any way thank I can. You so much. Thank you thank so you. much. And thank you so much for thank you so much, Dr. Latha. The, hopefully the relationship <laughs> for the next so many years yes. to come. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, we just found out that South Asians are highly underrepresented in the bone marrow registry. But the good news is that signing up as a donor and a potential lifesaver is a remarkably easy process. If you live in the U.S., it can be done from the comfort of your home with a home registration kit. So I appeal to South Asian communities worldwide to participate in the local bone marrow registry programs like 100,000 Cheeks by taking the swab test, and by spreading the word and encouraging others to do so. At the same time, it is crucial for us to support an organization like BMST in India, so that with their help, we can build a large network of bone marrow donors for South Asian communities all over the world. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our friends and families and to our future generations. It is our responsibility. The websites for the two organizations are 100kcheeks.org, which is 100kcheeks.org, and bmstindia.org. Vineet can be reached at v-i-n-e-e-t dot com at gmail dot com, and Latha at l-a-t-h-a at bmstindia dot org. To watch this show again, go to chaiwithmanjula.org or find us on YouTube. Before leaving today, I would like to thank e Prasaran Internet Radio for carrying my shows and messages to their audience worldwide. To all the listeners on e Prasaran, I thank you and invite you to get in touch with me at chaiwithmanjula at gmail.com with your feedback and questions. I always end the show with a written quote. But for our international audience on e Prasaran, I would like to also read it from now on. And today I have these lines from Mother Teresa. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. Thank you all for joining us. I'll be back with another inspiring story about giving and people making a difference. For Chai with Manjula, I'm Manjula Gupta. See you next time.